With only a few short weeks left in Jacksonville, it's time to find out if we and Sea Star are ready to travel. It's time for a shakedown cruise. Destination, Fernandina Beach, the northernmost city on Florida's Atlantic coast. We'll travel in both the Atlantic Ocean and the ICW, grab our first mooring ball, and dock the boat for the first time at a slip other than our own. All in 25 knot winds and choppy seas. What could possibly go wrong? Hi, I'm Monica and this is Darren. We sold our house and everything that goes with it to buy a boat and live on the water. With virtually no experience, we are transitioning from a yard to a yacht. On November 1st, together with our dog, Captain Kaya, we'll start our journey toward the leeward islands of the Southern Caribbean. So climb aboard and come with us as we go seeking adventure. This is the start of our first time out. We refer to it as a shakedown cruise. <laughs> shakedown cruise. In the Atlantic. In the Atlantic. So we're gonna go from Jacksonville all the way out St. John's River to the Atlantic, head north and go back in St. Mary's and end up in Fernandina Beach. That's our shakedown cruise. That's our shakedown cruise. We're gonna get there. We're gonna spend a day or two and then we're gonna come back the plan is through the intercoastal waterway to get back here to Jacksonville. It's 60 nautical miles round trip, and we are estimating today's trip from Jacksonville to Fernandina to take eight hours, given we go about seven knots per hour. That's the life of a trawler, slow and steady, where the point is to enjoy the journey, not just the destination. Thank you, Chris. Even though this was a big trip for us, we felt pretty small compared to some of the other vessels out on the river. reminder to make sure everything is stowed away securely. All right, so far so good. We have our uh, life vests back on. Don't want to be out in the ocean without life vests. And we managed to uh, get through the um, St. John's Channel in about three hours. And it was really very uneventful. It was beautiful. Dolphins, pelicans, just gorgeous, great weather, very little traffic, 
and that might be a combination because Ian just went through so there was very uh, little of the big ships there were some but not much and now we are in the Atlantic been in the, in the Atlantic for about well, 30 minutes 30 maybe. Minutes. We're, there's a, a buoy out at about three miles that we want to go out and go around before we start heading north. So we're still pretty much heading east. The reason we have to go way out in the ocean is because there are jetties in the inlet. So we're going to go a little further out. Then we're going to head north around that last buoy and on our way up to Fernandina. There's our three mile buoy that we've been waiting for. We are going to go left of this one toward port, which brings us north. So then we're, we, we will be paralleling land up toward Fernandina. As soon as we turned north, we were facing the wind. It made for a bouncy but beautiful ride. As we reached the St. Mary's Inlet, we were greeted with birds fishing for their supper. find the Civil War era Fort Clinch perfectly situated at the mouth of St. Mary's River, which job was to protect the natural deep water port at Fernandina. So we're in the uh, St. Mary's River now, headed south towards Fernandina Beach. It's a little industrial here, beautiful water. I had some issues with our a navigational system coming here. Chart plotters went out at one point. The backups for the iPad didn't work. So that's obviously a weakness that we need to address, but that's why we're doing a shakedown cruise so we can figure out the, the areas that we need to improve. I'm sure when we start to talk about this later, there'll be a few other things that we're going to need to address. Overall, though, cool being out in the ocean, even though it was only for about three or four hours. Throw us around a little bit, kind of woke us up to what maybe boating life is, is about when you're outside. Now it's just smooth as glass in the river. Good day so far. And it's time to catch a mooring ball for the first time. With me behind the wheel and Darren at the bow, we give it a go. I think end of the wind is good, Monica, for picking up this ball. But the tide's going the other direction. Should be interesting. A little, little more to our uh, port side, Monica. We're going to have to go on the other side of the ball to get the, uh, you're going to have to a little bit, just, just with the uh, bow sprit, just pass it. A little more, no, a little more, no. a little more, Monica.
let's try another one. Nope, too shallow. Not feeling this one either. Could this be our lucky ball? No, keep it going, Monica. A little bit more. Forward. Forward. Got it. So here's what we learned. If you don't succeed the first time, try again. Be patient and stay calm. It took us a good 20 minutes to tie up to this mooring ball, but we're learning and that's what it's all about. And oh yeah, thanks Captain Kaya. Couldn't have done it without you. Well, good morning, Monica. How would you sleep last night? Um, I slept pretty good, but it was a little bit uh, rocking and rolling, just like now. I don't know if you can see the boat moving. We are definitely in a place that there's a lot of uh, current, and it was pretty high winds. So I kind of felt good to get up. So this morning, we're starting out with some breakfast, some eggs and toast, and we're... Uh, going to have some uh, vegan uh, sausage with it. That looks really good. Will it surprise you to hear that I slept like a rock? <laughs> no. I, I usually lay awake and I listen to Darren sleep. So that's, that's how it goes. After a good breakfast, we pulled into Fernandina Marina, ready to explore the town. Fernandina Beach is a small city on Amelia Island at the northeast end of Florida. It is the only place in America that has been under eight different flags throughout its history and was first inhabited by the Timaquan Indian tribe in 1562. With all its rich history and quaint boutiques, it is easy to see why this little town has such a great reputation. We decided to go horseback riding, even though I'm terrified of horses. What's our name? His name is Duke. His name is Duke. Duke. What a good boy, okay, Duke. Duke. Be hey, good. Friend. Be good for yep. me. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. What out? Gentle Giants describes these horses well, but although they are used to this, they do have a mind of their own. And is Darren the boss? And do they really understand Norwegian? Survived it, Monica. I survived uh -huh. it. So that was a lot of fun in here in Fernandina Beach. So now we're going to head to the distillery, get a tour hopefully, and um, yeah, see what they have on offer. All right. Marlin and Barrel opened in 2015 and is located in a former warehouse and car dealership. Riley was kind enough to give us a tour. Okay, so we are primarily a rum distillery. We, uh, what's different about our rum versus some of the rums that you can get in the store is that we do a combination base for our rum wash. That's what we call the ferment. We do 50% of our fermentables are processed refined sugar, and the other 50% is molasses, 
food grade black uh, feed grade blackstrap molasses. It'll be about 50-50 between the two. It'll ferment over about three or four days because it stays very hot in our warehouse. It can wrap up pretty quickly. We'll end up with about 12% uh, alcohol and we'll run it into this large still right here. This is our, what is it? This is our 2,000 liter, about 530 gallon uh, pot still, single batch pot still. It's run off of these giant um, water heater, electric water heater cores. Mm -hmm. It'll take about two days for it to run a complete distillation and we'll get flavor rich product. So we can run it uh, and get it off of the still at about 120 to 130 proof. It'll be, have lots of flavor, it'll burn, it's really good for our light rums. We'll take it and then we carbon filter our rum to get out some, to make it a bit more palatable. Mm -hmm. It can be a little rough tasting when you do a split base rum, but it tastes a little bit like rum agricole. It's because we use refined sugar. How long does it take from start to finish for the bourbon? From, uh, from fermentation all the way to drinking? Yep. Drinking about four and a half years. Four and a half years. And it's stored in the barrels here? Stored here in all of these barrels. We've got a couple five-year-old barrels back there, but most of ours are going to be three to four years old. So we did a bulk of our mm. distilling. Riley, great. Thank you very much. Of course, nice talking it. to you. And we learned about different kinds of vodka, cellos in different flavors, rums, and bourbon, all natural with no added colors or flavoring. In addition, I'd like to tell you about a wonderful product that everybody goes crazy about. Smoked bird pepper vodka. We like to pair it with the local Olive Amelia down on Center Street. Um, this is their Bloody Mary mix. So smoked bird peppers. They come out of Jacksonville B&D Hot Sauce Company. We shop as local as we can, like I said before. Um, these peppers actually go to my backyard. I smoke them for three hours. They go right from the smoker into the vodka wow. and create the most perfect smoky um, Bloody Mary uh, pair. It's delicious together. You should really try it. <laughs> so you can also cook with this. Penne alla vodka sauce, floaters in your chili. I do taco meat, all kinds of different things you can do with this. Wow. Oh, that's just amazing, You don't right? have to twist our arms to No, try. I don't think so. It's good. Delicious. That is amazing. Mm. That is Ooh, it has a really kick to it. Really yeah. Good. Cheers. After all that spice and deliciousness, it was time to head back to the boat. But not before we grabbed some dessert from the local celebrity Nana Teresa's Bake Shop. Thank you so much for watching. It really means a lot to Monica and I that you would choose to spend your time with us. And if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe so that way you'll be notified of future episodes. And if you think your friends might enjoy watching, then please share with them. They may appreciate it and it will definitely help us to grow our channel. Thanks again for watching. We hope to see you soon.